welcome to <laughs> hello Gaston County. What episode is this? We have no idea. Um, we are back to talk more about leadership and the way of the shepherd. And you have tuned in to Gaston's Great, our local podcast talking about great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, and we're coming to you once again from the worldwide headquarters this week of GSM Services. Last week it was international, and next week it's going to be the Galact- intergalactic headquarters. No, I mean, that's where we're elevating our headquarters to outer space now. <laughs> uh, we'll come back to vision if you couldn't hear that. Amy, uh, excuse me, Naomi, I just called you Amy. Sorry. Uh, Naomi's over talking about vision. You're getting me distracted. So, as I've said on previous episodes, um, leadership is something that's super important to us here at GSM, and I think it's everything rises and falls on leadership. And once again, we have uh, Mark Benton with us today, who is uh, our operations manager here at GSM in our residential group. And Mark just has a terrific background uh, in leadership, both both here at GSM and his previous endeavors before being here at, at GSM. So I just think he's got some great insight on that. And so we are going to go to principle number five very quickly here um, on the book, The Way of the Shepherd. And again, if this happens to, for some reason, be the first episode you've heard us talking about Way of the Shepherd, I would encourage you to go back and listen to the first four uh, episodes talking about this and, and the other four principles. But this principle is called the staff of direction. So if you imagine a shepherd literally has a, a staff, and what is he doing? What is he or she doing with that staff? Because it's a, it's a leadership tool in this perspective. And frankly, uh, that's literally what a shepherd is doing that if they're, if they're shepherding a, a flock. And the author, and we agree with these concepts, is basically he talks about four functions of that shepherd staff. And it is, and the shepherd is to responsibility to direct your people or the flock. You're going to establish boundaries with the staff. You're going to rescue stranded sheep or stranded team members and responsibility to encourage the flock with the, the staff of direction. So what I like love about this book, it's a really simple concept. It's really relatively short read. That's why we one reason we like this book so much. But the author does a great job of breaking down this into bullet points and it's kind of summarizing the um the the the, the each principle again or as a quick staff of direction first bullet point he talks about which i really like and i'll turn then i'll send it over to mark to kind of get into more detail but principle number well the the first bullet point under staff of direction is know where you're going get out in front and keep your flock on the move so mark what kind of comes to your mind when you when you hear that yeah i we spoke about that as you know for me i'm trying to live in august right now You know, I like to be six months ahead of my group where we're already through the summer. You know, we've already slated. We're already doing great. We're, you know, everybody's safe. Everybody's happy. Everybody's well-fed. Everybody's good to go. And we've already made it through the summer. Now I'm already thinking about our marketing program for the fall. You know, as a leader, that's what I want to do. I want to lead my guys and let them know, hey, I'm out front. I've already, well, you know, one of the things about the staff is I've already spotted the potholes. I've already found the sinkholes inside of here. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm out. I'm trying to get out far enough to where I can find all the hazards in front of you before you hit Then you use the, the, the metaphorical, you're using that metaphorical staff to keep them out of the potholes. Exactly. Yeah, right? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm spotting these places for you. A good leader should be out far enough ahead to where he's already spotting all the potential hazards out there ahead of time and, and have a plan, you know, of where we're going to take you here. I already know where the green pastures are. I've already went out and scouted out, and I already know where I'm going to take you next because this is a green pasture instead of just uh, reactionary, right? You know, right. be deliberate about what you're doing. It could doing. be too late at that point. Yeah, at that point, you've got a sheep in a ditch, you know, <laughs> and you got to start pulling them out, right? Yeah, so I like the concept. It's something we talk about at orientation with new team members here, but guardrails and you know, core values and guidelines and standards are all, you, you could say they're kind of, you know, shepherd staffs as well that are that are in place to um, keep us headed down the right path and, and that vision that leader's vision of making sure they're going in in the right direction and headed headed that way well you've even said that before if you if you if you're in the field and you need to make a decision okay just pull out your core value card and read the core mm-hmm. values mm-hmm. you know if it falls inside of our core values you're oh. gonna you're, okay yeah. we're gonna be good 
you know, that's 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 your that's your benchmark, that's your guardrail. You know, it doesn't get much easier. Yeah. You know, so second, um, when directing, mm-hmm. use persuasion rather than coercion. I think that was one of those words I had to kind of look up to confirm you know, my understanding of it. But when directing, yeah, when, what do you think of when you hear that? When directing, use persuasion rather than coercion. Well, I think um, leadership is is great, but I think you you know a better coaching, you know, um, telling someone and threatening someone <laughs> can't um, be a, can't be a shakedown like the mafia, right? <laughs> you, know, you can't sit back and say if you but you know it, a lot of times, man. It, if you look back in life, you learned a lot from your coaches. I mean, I'm sure you learned a lot from Coach Ware and you know Coach Bird and and those guys, right? You know they. I don't know. They they made you the understand the why. They yeah. made you understand this is unfortunately for your benefit. Uh, a lot, some of those lessons I didn't realize until later, right? Yes, <laughs> right. And and I think that's what it is for leaders, right? Is I think you, for too long we had this envisionment of a leader was the guy that was screaming and yelling and doing this. And I'm thinking yeah, you're not going anywhere. People aren't. Yeah. They're following you out of fear. They're not following you out of trust or out of uh, devotion or any of that things, you know, out of trust, you know, it, yeah. they're following you because they're scared if they don't follow you. Out of position. Yeah. Out of, you know, you have the ability to say in the business world, they're following you because you have the authority to fire them as an example. Yeah. And, and, and what is the thing we say all the time, right? People don't care what you know until they know that you care. And that sounds so corny and so cliche, but if you fire that back and look at it, it's, it's pretty true, man. Well, what I've learned about, Clichés are called cliché. Click, blah, 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 blah. They're called clichés because they're often true. Yes, I mean, and that's why they've 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 lasted the the test of time. All right, third bullet point, which I, I like as well. Uh, give your people freedom of movement, but make sure they know where the fence line is. Don't confuse boundaries with bridles. We kind of touched on that one already, but what else do you think? Because uh, we got this is. Almost when I read that, almost guardrails jump up again. But when you read that one, what what kind of comes to mind? Well, it goes back to what, as a leader, I don't want to micromanage. If I'm micromanaging my team, I either don't trust them, which is really comes back to a fail fail on me as a leader. I should not have to micromanage my team. Yeah. If I've trained my team properly and I've led my team properly. And I have, by leading, I mean, I have set the example in front of them. They're going to, if they follow that lead, that's their boundary line. You know, it it almost comes back to the thing of what I said about the core values, right? You know, well, if you read the 20 core values, then you're going to know what to do. Well, also, if you look at um, Danny in our home performance division, leading, right, when the guys get under a house and they start working one of the things they do is, is this how Danny would do it? <laughs> you know, because he, st- he sets a great standard for those guys of this is how we do that amount. This is how we do that work. This is how we do this. Right. So they turn around and look at it and say, is this how Danny would do it? Right. Uh, when you go into a field and uh, a compressor change out, right, or an evaporator change out, the questions are, is this how Scott and Jason and Charlie would do it. I've watched it before with Owen, and Owen has taken a phone call from someone and has said, well, how, how would I do it if I was sitting there? And they would go, I got you, man. Because they've set that example. They've done the time, they've done the work, and they've set the example. Yeah, so, I mean, clear expectations. Uh, we talked about previous already, and also in the previous episode a little bit about vision and understanding where you're headed, and the leader has to know that, but those – so they're setting those standards and guardrails and guidelines. Yes. So they don't have to answer those questions or shouldn't have, right? There, there's uh, kind of that groundwork has been laid for, for what to do. So that's good. Um, uh, here's a good one. When your people get in trouble, go and get them out. <laughs> yeah. Again, we're talking about the staff of direction here, right? So envision literally a, a shepherd using his staff to help get a sheep maybe out of physical trouble in that world. Um, but obviously in the, the team world or the leadership world with people, there's a little more to it than just physical harm. But I mean, kind of what, what do you, what do you, how would you, what would you comment on that one? Well, I think if you go back up all the way to paragraph one, it says know the condition of your flock, mm-hmm. right? 
you know how people act normally. So if you see something that's off, right, care enough to pull that person off side by side and say, are you okay? And then a lot of time it goes to the three H's, right? What I always call the three H's, right? Do you need me to help you with this? Do you need me to hear you? Or do you need me, Do you just need a hug? Which is a lot of times in man world, right? Or in, in, in this in construction world, that means a, an emotional hug, not necessarily yeah. a physical hug, but an emotional the, the hug. A metaphorical fist bump. Yeah, to get, uh, to, right, to, to say to it's going to gonna be okay. And I think that's what it is, is when you bring, because everybody, not everybody, a lot of people, <laughs> I know I'm trying to work on that, man. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they lose hope, you know, and I think I see the world today and I see so many people that have just, I don't know, man, just lost, lost you know, they just go, and they just they are so close to throwing their hands up. And it's like when you're a leader like that, you need to see that that person's there and go back and get them and undergird that yeah. message and say, hey, man, you're not alone. And so many times right out here today, you know, just with my groups today that I have the privilege to, to be with today, you know, it's like sometimes all you've got to do is go, you know you're not doing this alone. Yeah. You know you've got your team behind you, and man, that's all it takes. And all of a sudden, they realize I'm not out here by myself. I am with somebody. Else. Yeah, there's also this human nature thing where we believe that we're the only person in the world who feels this way or has ever dealt with something like this, yes. or and so we think there's something wrong. But most of the time, and to your point about, I get, that, I say that too. Everybody, all the time, but it's most of the time. It's normal. Everybody feels that way at one time or another about whatever you're dealing with, right? So to your point, it's not only that you're not alone when you're in that team that cares, but you you probably somebody is or is somebody else feels the same way or has dealt with something similar, and so you know it, it, so many times we, especially I don't know, I listen to so many podcasts and I read so much. It seems like since 2020 2021, it's gotten a little worse, especially with young people about the anxiety and how they view the world. And I'm the only one dealing with this. I'm the only one that ever, nobody in the ever has felt this way. And again, that's so far from the truth. Um, but again, we get into those situations. That's when that leader, yeah, to, to, to specifically say they're in trouble, some type of trouble. Right. And the leaders. So part of that though, is being a leader, being able to recognize it. That's right. So that statement right there almost encompasses the previous four principles, it you does. know, um, so you get yeah you got to be available you got to be aware you got to be connected engaged and so you can see and know these things or know your team well enough that you can feel <laughs> the tremor and the force you know if, if something seems off and how many times do we go around asking people how are you today or whatever Fine. and we don't really listen to the answer right you know when the tone's a little different when we we got to stop and say whoa. What does that mean? Or you got to take, slow down, ask the next question, um, because that will go a long way to for that team member to understand that you know what I'm 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 not alone, and um, I'm not sure I do a good job at that. But it's it's a it's a great. Well, if you look at it too, if you know your team, you may not be the right person for to to save that wayward sheep, right? But I guarantee if you look, if you know your flock and you look through the flock, you'll know somebody, hey, I'm going to send you, right? I think, you know, we go back to the Bible, right? It's like, you know, send them, right? You know, send them. And I think that um, I'm trying to remember the quote so I don't mess it up, right? Uh, what is it, Naomi? You'll be able to tell me. It says, God does not call the chosen he Oh, no, it's, it, I knew I was going to mess it up. You don't know what it is, do you? But yeah, but it talks about qualify. That's what he doesn't. He doesn't qualify the chosen. He cho- or yeah, he doesn't choose the qualified. He qualifies the chosen. Oh, that's what it okay. is, right? Sorry, sorry, everybody. It took me a minute to get that out. No, that's good. But that is for me. Is there's somebody that may be better suited to go get that wayward sheep than you are. If you know your flock well enough, you might need to go. And, and again, I'm not saying expose a wound or anything like that, but you may go, hey, man, have you noticed that? 
this person's acting off today a little bit. And he's like, yeah, I know. I noticed he's not smiling. He's not happy and everything. Could you do me a favor? Would you go talk to him and just see what's, you know, see if you can see if, if he's okay? Does he need us for something? And a lot of times that person has been through it. So you can watch that, that sheep come back in because he realizes I'm not alone. Somebody else has went through what I'm going through <coughs> by confidence or whatever. Yeah, so you, you just talked about, and we mentioned – few minutes ago about how these are all related right these principles but you basically just said know the condition of your flock discover the shape of your sheep right i mean um and part of the leader leader is knowing what to do and to your point yeah you might not be the best person at that moment to that's right to 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 fly in and try to try to solve that and um this last one is really this is a big one for me and it is remind your people that failure isn't fatal. Um, fear of failure. When I look back, especially on my when I was younger in my academic career, high school and college, man, I was so driven. But it was looking back at the time, I didn't realize. But looking back, it was a fear of failure, and I'm not sure who I was trying to impress. I don't know the reasons for that, but it wasn't. And I just knew, looking back, I know that just caused some unnecessary anxiety or whatever because I wasn't driven to be better. It was strictly so I didn't screw up. And um, we're recording this. happens to be, what's the day, March 6th? I happen to be recording this. So we just have a, uh, happen to be the morning, the day we have our, Mark's team has their service department meeting. I mean, we just talked about that topic this morning with that group. So it's it's kind of interesting how sometimes if we're talking about in reality and day-to-day operations here or with anything we're involved with comes to here we are talking about it here but what do you see with that right the whole fear of failure and and the fact that hopefully we can understand that 99% of the time that failure isn't going to be fatal yeah well I think you know okay 54 year old me right understands that growth doesn't come from success right Growth, true growth, true growth comes from failure, right? Because, um, do I remember the name? If you're mature enough to learn from it. If you're mature enough to learn from it, yeah. Um, oh, God. Uh, Mandela. Mandela, right? I never lose. I either win or I learn, <laughs> right? That is the, that's the beauty of failure is you can choose. You, you, okay, you didn't win this one, right? You struck out, right? Or you, did, you, know, you didn't do it well. Right. Okay, but what did you learn from it? Did you learn from that? And for me, I love, you know, for me, when a guy turns around and goes, oh, that one did not go well at all. And I, because that's the first question out of my mouth is, I'm like, okay, good. And he goes, what do you mean good? And I'm like, you're going to learn something. That's very this. Jocko, by the way. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. 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 And I, but I'm very like, Jocko. okay, good. You know, and he's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, that means you're going to learn something today. If you're smart. You know, if you want to get better, if you want to grow as a person, that means you're going to get the opportunity to learn something today. Because so many times, a little bit of success, man, that that makes people very um, complacent. You know, they yeah. get they get very dead in the water. When you see somebody uh, get a little bit of success, I see a lot of complacency there. People want to stay in that place of of success yeah they don't want to stretch to that next level and man for me that's that's yeah ultimately with teams especially a little bit of success can lead to that complacency right and um or or frankly operating out of fear of failure is another thing that can it can freeze you it can yeah it, it can keep you from taking any risk and, and just so many things come from that um but then you can you can get some temporary success maybe i think from that fear of failure but long term it just it just it's just going to wear you you down, I think, and it's just you're not going to be able to maintain that long term success from that. But that and that goes straight back to the coach or to the leader for me because it's how do you react to that yeah. failure? Right, right. You know, if it is a violent reaction, is emotionally violent reaction, right? Um, yeah, at that person, the person That's a freezes. Good point. Yeah, how, how how do you react when there is an issue or a failure or something that needs to be coached? Is, is it is that do you make a big deal, bigger deal out of it than it should be? And do we have an environment where it's okay to fail? It's okay. Yes. To, it's okay to make a mistake. It's okay as long as we're 
getting on with it and moving forward. And to your point, learning, learning from that. And, you know, because again, I think the phrase I used this morning after you had um, talked about it was progress without, there's no progress without chaos. There's no progress without um, ex- gaining experience and experience comes from making mistakes. It does. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, right? You have to make those mistakes to, before you can be called experienced. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a fact of it. So, yeah. So that's, a, listen, that's a good one. So we're going to, uh, Mark, I appreciate that. We're going to wrap this up, but real quick, again, that was principle number five from the way of the shepherd staff, the staff of direction. So again, what tools are you using to help your team? Anything, anybody that you're leading in your team, basically stay in the right direction and, and know that um, the leader is there, right, to um, help and not coerce the team or bully the team into uh, get things done, but um, lead and coach in, in a manner that um, that the environment is, again, is just a positive place where, where progress can occur. So um, we're going to wrap this episode up. However, before we do, I'm going to make Naomi repeat. Right before we started recording, she had a terrific quote. So I am going to share a quote on this episode, and it was a person, a person without vision is a, slave to their is a slave to their reality. Now, next time I'm going to make her actually get on the mic and say it herself. Yeah, but, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah that that's that's good, right? So again, a lot of this leadership stuff we talk about is vision. It's it's you have to know where you're going. Um, so to to that one, you can just become a, a slave to what's whatever whim is going on around you. Whatever the whatever direction the wind's blowing, is just going to if you just go with it. That's what I think. That's a, a maybe a, a slightly different way to phrase that. But yeah, because um, if you don't know, right? If you don't know where you're going, any direction is fine. <laughs> So that's a good one, Naomi. I appreciate that. So you are officially now in the quote book for Gas and Great podcast. <laughs> yeah, she. I don't think she cares. Um, so to our listeners out there, thanks again for hanging out with us and taking time to listen to today's episode. Please continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast. And please don't hesitate to contact us at our email address, which is at podcast at gasinsgreat.com. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please follow us on all our social media platforms. And thanks again to Mark for being our guest today and sharing his insights on leadership. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to you by Naomi Hunt and Amy Anderson from GSM Services. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us. And please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's Great. <laughs>